The fourth thing all pro players do when they hit a forehand is they follow through. Now, from my contact point to follow through, I'm going to do a couple things. First, I'm going to extend out in the direction that I'm hitting the tennis ball. So once the ball leaves my strings, I'm still going to extend out in the direction that I've just hit. And then once I reach this point, I'm going to bring the racket across my body in a smooth and relaxed motion. Now, when I bring the racket across my body, I'm going to turn my forearm and wrist over as one piece like I have a watch on and I'm trying to check the time. And that allows me to slowly and smoothly decelerate the tennis racket. Now, if we go back to my contact point, what you'll also notice as I bring the racket around is that I continue to rotate my upper body a little bit. And by doing all these various things, that's going to allow me to not only throw, slow the tennis racket down, but also decelerate my body smoothly. From his contact point, Frank's going to begin his follow through by first extending out in the direction that he's hitting the tennis ball. And once he's extended out, like he's done here, he brings his racket across his body in a smooth and relaxed motion. And when he does that, he turns the forearm and the wrist over like he's checking the time on a wristwatch. Now, if we go back to his contact point, as he follows through, he also continues to rotate his upper body and he also brings the racket up over his shoulder. And when you're first building your forehand, that's where you want to follow through. After you hit, bring the racket up nice and easy over your shoulder. Now let's look at some pictures of Andy Roddick following through. In this first shot, Andy has just hit the ball and he's extending out in the direction that he hit. He's really got good extension into the court. And just about now, he's probably begun to turn his forearm and his wrist over like he's got a watch on. In this next shot, he has turned his forearm and his wrist over. If he was wearing a watch, he could see what time it is. And he's also brought the racket and his arm across his body in a smooth and relaxed motion. And he's continued to rotate a little bit. Now in this shot here, he has completed his follow through by bringing the racket up over his shoulder. Again, that's what we emphasize and advocate, bringing the racket over your shoulder to complete your follow through when you're first building your forehand. Now Andy doesn't always follow through like this. Sometimes he'll follow through like this instead where the racket is down by his waist or maybe by his torso. And there are a number of ways you can follow through when you hit a forehand. And I'm not going to get into why you might follow through like this as opposed to over your shoulder like we've emphasized. There's a number of reasons why you might change your follow through. But what you want to take away when you're building your forehand, bring the racket up over your shoulder. Let's go back to that last clip. Again, that's what Andy's doing here. Racket is up over the shoulder. This is the easiest way to build your forehand. Bring the racket across the body, nice smooth motion, turn the forearm and the wrist over, and bring it up over your shoulder. That will get you hitting a very solid and a fundamentally solid forehand.